Hello, and welcome to Lessons in History. The yellow today is, why did medicine stand still for so long? Today, we will be looking at how Hippocrates and Galen's ideas influenced Western medical thinking for well over a thousand years. Arab doctors will be shown to have kept knowledge alive well after the collapse of the Roman Empire. We will show how the Christian Church both helped and hindered medical progress. However, when the Black Death arrives, not even the power of prayer could help. Timestamps are in the video, so feel free to jump to the topic that you find most tricky. Hippocrates and the Father of Modern Medicine Our course starts with a man named Hippocrates. He was born and lived on the Greek island of Kos around 400 BC. At the time, the typical treatment for those that were ill would be that prescribed by a shaman or a witch doctor. Typically, this included the practice of trepanning or drilling holes into people's heads for things such as migraines and seizures as a way of removing the evil spirit that was obviously causing these issues. Belief was based highly on superstition. Hippocrates wasn't happy about this and began to look for a more rational and scientific explanation for both treatment and cause of disease. He developed what became known as the theory of the four humours. This theory would be the dominant explanation for cause of disease for well over 1500 years. With humorism, Hippocrates stated that the body was made up of four liquids. Replace the word humour for liquid. These were phlegm, blood, yellow bile and black bile. A quick way to remember this, peanut butter, yellow babies. If these liquids were imbalanced, or you had too much of one, then you would be sick. And equally, if these liquids were balanced or in the right amount, then you would be healthy. Each humour had its own special quality, such as being linked to the classical elements, but also to a particular part of the body and even season of the year. Blood was associated with air, the liver, spring, warmth and moisture. So, for example, if blood as a humour became excessive, the illness was likely to be warm and moist in character, with symptoms such as redness, swelling, rapid pulse and breathing. The typical profile of a fever due to infection. Let's be very clear. For humour theory is what people believed, in addition to God, to be the cause of illness for such a long period of time. Therefore, any treatments would be focused on rebalancing the humour or liquid. This is probably why you are so familiar with hearing about leeches being used to drain blood. Bloodletting was one of the most common treatments in Europe. Hippocrates wrote around 60 books and stressed the importance of observation and that doctors should record symptoms. He also stressed the importance of diet and rest in the recovery of a patient. Hippocrates is regarded as the father of modern medicine, with doctors around the world taking the Hippocratic Oath. Galen If there was an award for the deepest and most enduring influence over Western medicine, then Galen, perhaps with Hippocrates, would head the shortlist. Galen's key contribution came having worked as a gladiator surgeon in Rome around 150 AD. Galen studied medicine at the famous Alexandria Library in Egypt before moving to Rome. He developed the ideas put down by Hippocrates and came up with the treatment or theory of opposites. The idea was that if you had too much phlegm, water element, then you needed something hot and dry to bring this humour back into balance. Galen encouraged dissection wherever possible as a way of learning. He famously performed dissections on apes and dogs, but his most famous experiment would be that on a live pig. Wanting to show others about the role of nerves, this experiment of vivisection proved that it was the brain and not the heart, as was believed, that controls speech. Whilst Galen wrote many books, because he was limited to dissecting animals, some of his ideas were incorrect. He wrote that the left kidney was lower than that of the right. Correct for an ape, but not a human. Finally, and what's vital, he believed that the human body was perfectly designed, with things working so well in unison that there must be 
a creator. As we will shortly see, Galen's ideas were adopted by the Christian church and held up as the pinnacle of human medical knowledge for hundreds of years. Arab medicine. From the 5th century, the Western Roman Empire was in decay. Societies began to become more disorganised and written works, including historical records and teachings of Hippocrates and Galen, became scarcer and more sporadic. Europe was drifting into the so-called Dark Ages. In contrast, in the Middle East, from the 8th century, Islam ushered in a golden age. Dominating in the fields of health and medicine were the works of Reyes and Ibasina, also known as Avicenna. These Muslim writers played a very important role in saving much of the lost knowledge. They translated the works of ancient Greeks and Romans into Arabic, which was eventually passed back to Western Europe. Avicenna was one of the most celebrated philosophers and physicians in the early Islamic empire. He wrote many texts on a wide range of subjects. 40 of his medical texts have survived, the most famous being the Book of Healing and the Canon of Medicine. The latter is one of the most significant books in the history of medicine. It was printed in Europe at least 60 times between 1516 and 1574. The canon remained a major authority for medical students in both the Islamic and Christian world, well until the 1700s. Another Arab doctor, Reyes, who lived from around 860 AD, wrote the first authentic description of the symptoms of smallpox. From their establishment in 900 AD, Islamic hospitals were sites of medical education as well as healing. The most famous hospitals included those in Baghdad, Damascus and Cairo. They contained lecture rooms, pharmacies and libraries. As important as reading and mastering text in the Islamic tradition was instruction. Many students received practical training in hospitals. Some even observed patients at bedside. Cleanliness was encouraged and hospitals were often centred around fountains and cooling breezes circulated around wards. Christian Church Control with the collapse of the Roman Empire, the Christian Church took control, filling the power void. The Church was the way in which the illiterate masses of Europe would interact with God. After all, the printing press had not yet been invented, and the Word of God was typically spread by priests in small communities. Religion played a huge part in most people's lives, so it was not surprising that people thought that God had a part to play in the spread of disease. If someone was sinful, then a difficult disease was God's way of punishing them for their sins. The church therefore encouraged people to pray for deliverance from illness. Over 700 hospitals were set up by the church in England between the year 1000 and the year 1500, as after all, it was central to being a good Christian, and many of these were attached to monasteries. And whilst the very sick were turned away, these were certainly places anybody could go. A nice phrase to use would be to say that these hospitals, ran by monks and nuns, with the power of prayer and comfort, tended to care for rather than cure the sick. The church also set up medical schools, spreading the works of Galen. In these medical schools, for humour theory would be taught. Students would be instructed and told about the body using Galen's works rather than exploring for themselves. Limiting medical progress, the church made it extremely difficult to dissect human bodies, so students could not see for themselves the mistakes Galen made. These mistakes, as a result, would be passed on from generation to generation, thus perpetuating and spreading Galen's ideas. The church's insistence on using Galen and his works widely limited the progress in understanding the workings of the human body. Scientists who tried to insist on the scientific method and individual exploration of the subject often ran into conflict with the church. In 1277, Roger Bacon was arrested for encouraging doctors to perform their own investigations. It is fair to say that the Christian church both helped in terms of monasteries, hospitals, caring for the sick, and hindered medical progress. It is easy to look back 
to say that limiting human dissections and not allowing Galen's works to be challenged was an issue. But the church did provide refuge for the poor and places of learning via medical schools. It is therefore up to you. Do you think the church helped or hindered medical progress? Public health is the health and well-being of the population as a whole. In the Middle Ages, public health was poor by modern standards, but hygiene levels were rising in some places. Water was obviously a key component for any society. Medieval towns took water from local springs, wells or rivers. Some of the Roman sewers survived and still worked well. However, as towns grew, systems could not always cope with the increased demand for water and rivers were often used to remove sewage, this making it even more difficult to find fresh water. Towns were much dirtier than the countryside. There were only a few paved streets and cesspits, a holding tank for poo and waste, would spill onto the streets. There were some examples of privies or outside toilets being built, but as demand increased, so did the stench. Butchers brought live animals into town to slaughter, leaving them with the problem of how to get rid of the waste. There were no dustbins or rubbish collectors to remove waste, so it just accumulated in the streets until it rained and washed away. With all of this waste in plain sight, rats were attracted, and in 1348, tragedy struck. The Black Death Until recently, most historians thought that the Black Death outbreak to hit Europe in 1348 wiped out only a third of the population. More recent studies and information suggests that this was closer to half of the population. Half of Europe died as a result of the outbreak in 1348. Let's get this out of the way sharpish. At no point in your exam should you be mentioning rats and fleas. Whilst we now know how the disease was spread, questions in your exam will only talk in terms of impact or what people thought caused the disease at the time. If you are ranting about rats and fleas, please bring it back to what they thought was the cause. And in short, they had no clue. It was in fact one of the rare times that the Christian church allowed human dissection because it was that confused. We can break the Black Death of 1348 into causes and treatments and further subdivide each into natural and supernatural explanations. As you might have guessed, the imbalance in humours was one of the first things that was tried, but bloodletting didn't seem to be going anywhere, so people started to look to blame individuals. Jews were targeted for their supposed involvement in the death of Christ, and had always been seen as shifty or untrustworthy members of society. A rumour was spread that they had poisoned wells, and a famous image in Frankfurt, Germany, shows Jews being burned alive, believing that they were the cause. Even more extreme were a group called the Flagellants. Some devout Christians roamed the land, believing that God had sent this pestilence as a punishment. As such, the Flagellants would flog or hit themselves to try and seek God's forgiveness. The final supernatural explanation was the alignment of Venus, Mars and Saturn. The alignment of the planets, or a belief in astrology, was common, where people derive meaning from the position of stars or celestial bodies. Just think of those people that still to this day believe in horoscopes. Obviously, this wasn't scientific and was based entirely in superstition. In terms of treatments, other than flogging by flagellants, bloodletting in accordance with four humour theory and the power of prayer, there simply was no response. Now, some wise women did pass on herbal remedies, but any success would simply have been good fortune. Some, believing in the theory of miasma, or bad smells causing disease, led to people like the Pope sitting for three months surrounded by fire, which was meant to purify the air. In some, the vast numbers that died, and the limited ability by the Christian Church to respond, led to a growing scepticism of the Church by those that survived. Thanks for making it to the end. I've put some practice questions up should you wish to give these a go. Leave any questions you have in the comments if you're unsure of the content and what you would like to see next. Remember, these videos are here for your benefit, so if you liked the video, you know what to do, and if you didn't, then tell me how to make them better. Do you think the Christian Church helped or hindered medical progress? 
what was the significance of Galen and Hippocrates on medicine. I'd be curious to hear what you think. Thanks for watching Lessons in History, and I'll see you in the next video.